Hi everyone, it's Steph here if you don't already know and on this channel I just talk about all things careers and all things lifestyle and in today's video I'm going to be talking about my first six months as a trainee solicitor like I can't believe that six months has gone so quickly I literally feel like it was yesterday that I was recording my first three months as a trainee solicitor video and here I am three months later it's crazy but no super excited I will be doing like a little review of my first seat um, I guess like my hopes and my ambitions for my second seat and I'm also going to kind of do like a mini review of my first three months as a solicitor video as well so if you like this kind of content please do make sure that you like comment and subscribe and give me a follow on Instagram too because I post more tips and content there. But what does due diligence actually mean? Well, in very, very simple terms, we're essentially just checking that everything matches up to what it's meant to be. Mm -hmm. So how does that translate to a typical trainee task? The kind of due diligence stuff that I have been doing and that I know that a lot of trainees generally tend to do revolves around things like the corporate authorization. So the corporate <laughs> oh my gosh, authorization. Yeah. Cool. So at the time when I recorded this, like the only due diligence that I had really done at that point was reviewing corporate authorizations. And for anyone who doesn't know, corporate authorizations are just the documents that companies need to say that they can enter into a particular transaction. So on our end, it's board minutes, shareholder resolutions, and an officer certificate or a formality certificate or a director certificate, whatever. Cool. Um, there is definitely so much more involved in due diligence. I just hadn't been like exposed to that yet. And there's also obviously the company search reports, which I think I did mention in that video, but that's like a big thing that is still there. And I'll be honest, like due diligence is not fun. It's not like when you think of like being a solicitor and like big law and, you know, suits, how to get away with murder and all that kind of good stuff. Like due diligence is not fun. That's not, that's not what people get up to do, but it is definitely, from my experience in the past three months, one of the most important aspects of a deal because if you mess up the due diligence, you could genuinely mess up the whole deal. So like, I've come to realise how important it is as a task, even though I didn't necessarily enjoy it. Um, and I found that, especially again in debt finance, like there was really, really good training around it. Like every week or so, we kind of had like, you know, training on how to review a security document or how to review corporate authorizations or how to deal with legal opinions etc etc so like that was really really helpful um and yeah it was just a good experience for me so can't fault that so well the third one that i was going to talk about was drafting now this mm -hmm. one is pretty fun um in the lpc i never liked I drafting I be fun and if anyone's doing the lpc now yeah drafting was just not cool <laughs> like it wasn't yeah i can't lie like i don't know like drafting can be fun but it depends on the document that you're actually drafting um and i think at the time that i recorded that i can't even remember what document i was referring to yeah no i can't remember what document i was referring to to be honest but since then i have drafted a witness statement um not in my debt finance seat um just in case anybody was like oh but you're in a transactional seat no i did um what well, i am still doing a pro bono matter um which is you know kind of like a litigation matter so that's why i had to draft a witness statement um have also done a little bit of drafting with a facility agreement actually which was actually quite cool especially because that's a typical associate task so that was really nice like as a first seat trainee to just kind of see you know what an associate would have to do in the, the team that was actually kind of cool um drafted accession deeds drafted what else have i drafted security documents actually like simple ones so like very very basic ones um obviously corporate authorizations legal opinions so i've pretty much like everything that a trainee is expected to have had at least a go at drafting i have done um which again i'm very very thankful for like um again one thing about the debt finance seat that i had it may also just be because like it was generally a very busy time in the market so there was just a lot of work to be done but i had a lot of exposure to so many different things um and you know from what i've heard from previous trainees that's not always the case like not necessarily previous trainees at my firm by the way just people in the law in general it's not always that you get to have a go at everything like so i'm really grateful that i've been able to do that that's actually been quite enjoyable but yeah like i said like drafting i don't know that it's something that i would describe as fun anymore but it's definitely something that's beneficial um and it's something that it's a technical skill that's important to have anyway 
so the other three things that i spoke about in that video um where i kind of reviewed like my first three months as a trainee was business development pro bono and then just everything else that i've been doing so like stuff with grad recruitment and stuff like that right and one thing well actually there was a couple of things i noticed the further on i got into my seat the busier i got in the sense that i was doing a lot more work but i was also being a lot more like productive because you know there were certain tasks which the first time I, I would have done it it would have taken me like maybe four hours to do a two hour task or something like that right whereas like now i can do a two hour task in two hours because i know how to do it but once you know how to do something you do also get given more of that thing so i did find that like past my maybe four month mark i was getting given a lot more work which did kind of mean like I didn't always have time to put myself forward for like the business development stuff or the grad recruitment stuff that I genuinely wanted to do just because I just didn't know how I would be able to balance that with like my health sleeping that kind of thing um but I have still done like quite a few grad recruitment things you will be seeing I don't know if it's already out yet so I'm not going to spoil it but you will be seeing some things I've done with grad recruitment soon um so I have definitely still been involved I just kind of recognize that it reached a point where like I was actually working a lot and enjoying it don't get me wrong but like I was actually working a lot to the point where I didn't have time to just kind of fill my day with like business development and like graduate recruitment stuff and stuff like that so that was quite interesting for me because I did always feel like that was something I wanted to try and not not necessarily prioritize but just make sure I always had time for so I think going forward I'm definitely going to like speak to associates who seem to do it really well and just ask them like what are their kind of tips i guess more so around productivity to kind of help them be able to do that right because they obviously still like you know do all of the work that they need to do for clients but they are still able to kind of integrate into the firm in all of these other ways so i do want to make sure that i can do that as well because i do genuinely enjoy it and i think it's an important thing to do so that's something i've kind of picked up on towards the end of my first seat but it's okay i think i am gonna be better at it and i'll try and do another review you know three months into my second seat and reassess and reevaluate then to see how I've been doing. So that's cool. Cool. So I guess aside from my typical trainee tasks in the debt finance team, how did I actually find my seat overall? Um do you know what in all honesty it's a mixed bag of emotions and I say that because I really really enjoyed the work. Like I absolutely loved it. I also really liked the team. Like the team were really really friendly and that's from partners to associates to trainees like i feel like i was able to communicate with everybody um i didn't feel like shy to ask questions or anything like that so that was really really important for me and i really am um, thankful i guess that i could do that the things that i would say were maybe bad about my first seat to be honest i'm not even really like anything that anyone could have done better like if i'm being honest i did my first seat in a pandemic right so i did it virtually which it wasn't the best um but i don't think there was anything more that could be done um and i think progressively going back into the office maybe not five days a week but you know progressively going back into the office however many times is necessary is something that will make the training contract experience a bit better and the reason why i say that is because for me anyway the training contract is kind of like like think of like an apprenticeship where you're learning on the job right that's kind of what a training contract is like in terms of the fact that you're expected to learn on the job and i don't know how many of you have tried learning on the job virtually it's not easy it's not easy there will be times like there have been times when i've been in my office and my supervisor has been in and like i'll hear her on the phone with a client or something and she'll say something or she'll handle the client in a particular way and, and i'll just make a mental note and i'll be like oh next time a client calls me this is what i'm gonna say or this is what i'm gonna do that doesn't happen virtually because i'm not like it's not like i'm just you know on the phone 24 7 with whoever i'm working with so i can just listen in on whatever they're doing there's far less opportunity to join in on client calls where like you're not really going to be doing anything far less opportunity to kind of like just be invited to random networking things because it's kind of out of sight out of mind right if people don't see you regularly they sometimes just forget that you're around or like forget to invite you to stuff or whatever and yes definitely do like watch my video on how to kind of build relationships in a remote working world because i think those tips will definitely help improve things but nothing replaces the face-to-face -face experience so i think that did definitely kind of i guess put a little bit of a damper on my experience in the seat um but overall i definitely did really enjoy the seat um 
I don't know if I can raise it out of 10 because I just feel like there were just too many factors to consider and I just wouldn't really know how, like what I'm even gonna base the rating on. But I did definitely enjoy it. One thing that I have really like been happy about is that it's confirmed for me that I'm definitely a transactional girl. Like I thought when I was coming in that that's what I would like, which is why I put down transactional seats as my first options because I wanted to kind of try it straight away. And then if I found that I didn't like it, then at least I would know early on in my training contract. But no, I definitely really enjoyed it. It's why I put down a transactional seat again for my second like choice and I got it. Um, so I'm looking forward to my capital market seat. I hope that now that I will be going into the office a little bit more, still not five days a week, but like a little bit more, um, it will kind of make that experience a little bit better for me, I guess. Um, and I, I hope to kind of, you know, have the same, if not like a better experience in capital markets as I did in debt finance, because I, I did really enjoy it. I was really happy there. I think it's a really good first seat to do. Um, you get a lot of support and you do get like really good training there. So that was good. And I'm looking forward to my seat ahead. So yeah, if you like this kind of like, you know, review content, please do let me know down below. Please do as ever like, comment and subscribe and give me a follow on Instagram and I'll be back again next week with another video.